Uh, okay. Um, good morning, everybody. So today we are going to be talking about uh, CG five hundred one structural analysis three. So we are starting with the very first um, topic, which is energy methods in structural analysis. Okay. So this is the objective of what we want to achieve at the end of this session. Um, I believe anybody that has a question would drop the questions in the chat box, like Taiwo said. Okay, so today we want to achieve one, drawing embedding moment and shear force diagrams. Okay, um, this normally is something that we all know, but the man has a way of um, calculating his own bending moment and shear force. So I want to reintroduce us to his concept and then we'll solve some questions to, you know, acclimatize us to the process. Okay, so the second one is understanding the concept of strain energy and complementary energy. Then thirdly, we are going to be deriving various formulas. Yeah, for this one, I would like to um, implore us to ensure we learn derivations because I have it on good authority that the man likes setting derivations. It always comes out, either in his test or in his exam. So as much as possible, as much as you are learning the calculations, try as much as possible again to learn the derivations so that at least with derivations, you know that once you get the answer, you get the answer. If it's not, oh, I'm not sure, blah, 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 blah. Once you see the answer right there to know whether, okay, I'm right or I'm wrong. And then lastly, we are going to, um, our last objective is confidently solving problems on the above topics. So let's get into it. So our first question, like I said, we are going to be solving a question on bending moment and shear force. Okay, can everybody see my screen? Hello? Yes, yes, I can. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, yeah, I can. thank you. Okay, so the first question is this. This question is pretty simple, but from the man's perspective, there are ways he wants us to derive our bending moment and shear force diagram. So we are going to go into this and we are going to start with this pan CD. Okay, the shear force of the span CD. Okay, so now for the man's method, normally when we started learning uh, shear force and bending moments, we no normally just considered the two ends, that is point C and point D. So once we knew the values at those points, we just connect them straight. But what of if we have to find shear force of maybe at the middle or three quarter or one quarter at different points in that um, span. That's where this man's method comes in handy. Okay, so we are starting with the span CD. Now, if we take a point X, okay, a point X, a distance x from of CD. Now that will be less than two two meters, but if the shear force is actually the area of this the shape we are considering. Now to get the shear force, we need to find the area of the triangle because this is a triangle. Okay, so to get the area of the triangle, we are talking of half base times height. Now, the base now is the x distance, okay, that we are considering. While the height is something that we do not know because we are not considering the full span. If we are considering this full span from the question, the height will be what, 20. But now we are not considering the full span. So we are considering a portion of the span to get a formula involving x so that when we put in different values, of X, maybe X at 1.5 or X at 1.2, we'll be able to get the shear force 
at those points. Okay? So when we get the area, which is half base times height, your base is the x now, okay? Your height is what we are now going to try and relate to based on x. Now, the way we can relate it is true what similar triangles. Now, to get h, we already know that the full triangle is what this and the length or the base or the bottom has a length of two meters, while the height is 20. So if we use similar triangles, where 20 is the height, the base is two, and now the new triangle that we are considering, which is like a subset of the old span, would be what the H would be there, and then the new distance we are considering will be X. I hope people are understanding what I'm trying to, what I'm saying. Yes, Please comment in the comment section so that I would, okay, I'm being too fast. Okay, so I would, uh... <laughs> okay, so thank you, Richard and Damilari. So I would slow down for my work. I can do, sorry for interrupting. I would suggest, you know, the diagram that you probably, you figured out from the main diagram, I think you should be going back to the main diagram and coming back so people can actually relate it. You know, we are trying to imagine from our end, you know, the diagram you showed from the very first slide. I don't know if it gets me. Okay, you know what you guys can do for me? Can you yeah. guys please draw this exactly. on a paper, anything? Exactly, exactly. Okay, uh, Maiwa has informed me that he has completed his own drawing. So I'm going to use him as benchmark, okay? So now, like I said, I'm considering span CD. Okay, so I'm considering CD. And I said, we are not just going like we normally do where we just that point C and point D. Now we are trying to derive a formula that would enable us get the shear force at any point within that span. Okay, like let me repeat what I said. We are trying to derive a formula that would enable us get the shear force at any point within the span CD. So we are not just concerned about point C and point D. Like we normally do, you know, normally when we are calculating our shear force, we just oh find the area, bam, bam, bam. we know, okay, this point is point starting at zero. This one goes to the end and then we draw our shear force. But like I said, if we're asked to find the shear force at three quarters of the span, what do we do? So that, that's what he's trying to attain by this method. Because this method is more holistic in the sense that it covers every point or every action within that span. Okay. So let's get back to the question. Now, to get shear force, normally we know that shear force is basically finding the area of the shape. It is basically finding the, the area in which the force is acting on. That's what to give us the shear force. Now this shape, this shape that I have used the continuous line to draw is what we are trying to consider now, okay? So the area of the triangle equals to half base times height. Now the base would be X. 
Now, the height is what we do not know because the height is not 20 anymore. Because, like I said, this is like a subset of the entire set. But the good news is we can get our age. And the way we can get our age is by using something called similar triangles. Now, like you see, there I drew some dotted lines to indicate that the shape is continuous. So that dotted line, if you look at it completely, it is a triangle. Now the lines that are drawn also in continuous lines is also a triangle. And they, are, they have similar angles, they have similar shape. Therefore, we can use the similar triangles theorem to get the value of H, okay? Now, Okay, so now to get the value of H, we use similar triangles like I have said. Now the height of the total triangle, which is from span CD, you can look at your drawings to indicate, um, to understand what I'm trying to say. Now the span of CD has a total height of 20, okay? While the bottom, the base, has a length of two meters from our drawing, okay? So that's what was indicated here. Where you saw the 20 over two, okay? Now the height of the subset triangle is H. I represented it with H, okay? And the base is X. Now, if we do our normal cross multiplication and division, we'll know that H equals to what? 10X. Now, in putting that into the area of the triangle, which is half base times height, our base is x, we already know that. Then our h, through our own derivation, we saw that h equals to what? 10x. Are we following? Yeah, I am. Okay, so from there now, we already know that in putting that into the equation, we know that half times x times 10x will give us what? The shear force within that span. So by our calculation, canceling and what have you, we derive that fx equals to what? 5x squared. Okay, which is what I wrote here. So that is the shear force within that span. So to get maybe the shear force at point 1.5, we we'll just say, okay, X equals to 1.5, and that would be what, five times 1.5 square. Okay? So moving on now, we now said, okay, when X equals to zero, FX equals to zero kilonewton. And then when X equals to two, FX equals to 20 kilonewton. So with that, we have stored that information. Okay? Now, BC for span BC, that was, that's the next span. Similarly, what we did for CD, we are going to... Sorry, I have a question. Okay, who has a question? Okay. Why are we starting from span CD? Why are we not going from left to right, instead of right to left? Okay, um, that's a very, very good question. Now, the reason why we started from span CD is because of at point A, there is a fixed support. Now at that fixed support, there is a moment there. You see it in your bending moment diagram. You can actually start from either side, normally like the way we normally calculate. But for simplicity, I would advise to start from maybe a free end or an inch support. But you can actually start from anywhere. Okay. Am I on that? Yes. So you can start from anywhere. Okay, so. Yes, I'll do it. Okay, so from BC now, 
we are considering spam BC. And you know, we share for share for us is uh, what's the word I'm looking for now? It compounds. So we need to consider it from point D to point P prime, which is the new point that we have taken in the span BC. Okay. So FX now will be what? Please send this note when you are done teaching. Thank you very much. Sorry. Please appreciate if this note of solvent is sent like the group chat when, you are, when the tutorial is over. Thank you. Okay, no problem. It should be yeah. sent to the group chat. Okay, so for spam BC now, okay, we are taking it from B prime to D. That will be the entire length of our X as is shown on the diagram on your screen. Now, to get for um, point B prime to C, all we just need to do is, we already know the distance of C to D. From your drawing, we already know that C to D is what? Two meters. So to get for B prime to C, all we just need to do is simple arithmetic, which is what? X, which is the total length from B prime to D minus C to D, which is two meters. So therefore, B prime to C will be what? X minus two. So now looking at the shear force, to get the area of the rectangle, it will be what? 20 times what? X minus two for span B prime C, okay? And then the, that of the shear force of the triangle, which is span CD, will be what? Half base times height, which is what? Half times 20 times the base, which is what? Two, okay? So if we break it down, we would get 20 into brackets, what? X minus two plus 20. So then when we put X equals to two, we get 20, which is what should normally be there. And then when X equals to eight, we get 140 kilonewton. Now let's consider span AB. Okay, to CD. Randall, please hold on a little bit. This span CD. Um, Shame, where are you lost? Shame. Okay, I think she was left the group. So let's continue. Um, for span, are you people following me? Yeah, yeah, continue. Okay, so we are considering span AB. Is that okay? Can I move to span AB now? All right, this is just for, just to be clear, this is just for share for us. We haven't done pending yeah, this is just share force. So we need to actually move as fast as we can. You can continue, please. Okay, for a person asking how I got the eight, I asked you people to draw the diagram. From the diagram, the question, from B to D is six plus two, which is eight. That's the point we are in now. Is that understandable? Yes, please, you can continue. Okay, wonderful. 
So for span A, B now. Span A, B. We have this. Now to get the shape force of this now, we have to consider three shapes, which is what? The triangle, the rectangle, and then the, par um, the trapezium. So from the triangle now, we are talking about what? Half base times height. Sorry, is it a B that is shown on your screen? No, no it's, it's not. It's still, it's still B. It's still B, D. Hi, Randy. It's possible your screen sharing is paused. So you probably move your mouse around, you know. Hi, Radu, can you hear me? Yeah, Taiwo, what's up? Yeah, I don't know, I think it's from your head. Probably you, you may want to take the screen down and then share again. Okay. All uh, right. Well, a quick one, when you are sharing screen, eh, for you to confirm if it's reflecting, it's going to be showing green. When it turns to yellow, probably your mouse is probably you press something. That means the screen sharing is paused. So we won't be seeing what you are doing. It's just probably where you stop class that we're going to be seeing. So try to take note of the color, whether it's green or yellow as you are sharing. I don't know if it gets me. Taiwo, please uh, check your DM. All right, all right. So. Okay, so we can move to an A, B now. All right, great. Now for span A, B, we have this diagram now. We have three shapes that we are concerned about. We have the words triangle from span C, D. We have the rectangle from span BC. And now this shaded portion or the area we are now concerned with. Now to get the shear force, we can always get that through finding the areas. Of, now from the triangle, we have what half base times height. Okay. And then for the trapezium, we have what half AB times H. And then for the rectangle, we have base times height, okay? So now for the triangle, we have what? Half times two, which is the base length, then times 20, which is the height. Plus for the trapezium, we have what? Half A, which is this, the shorter side or the shorter length, then plus B, which is the full one, which we have found out to be what? 20 and then the height now the height is something we don't also know but we can also get it so how do we get a we get a true similar triangles like we did earlier now using this we can get our A 
by saying this full triangle, okay, which has a base length of two meters and a height of 20, will be what 20 over two equals to what A, which is this point, okay? And then the base will be what? 10 minus X. How did I get 10 minus X? Now, the full length of the shape, the full length of the shape is 10, 10 meters. If X is from the point where we are concerned about, that's the shaded end of AB to the end of what point D, that's what X is. And the full length of the shape is 10. To get the other end will be what 10 minus X. So that's how I got 10 minus X to be the what base of this new triangle I'm concerned about. I will say it again in case maybe it was not understood. Now, the full length of this shape or this couple of shapes is what? 10. That's the base length. Now, the length of the points I'm concerned about, you know, I have, I'm considering a section of what? Span A, B. Now, from that point, which will, let's consider it to be A prime, to the point D is X. Now, so from A, which is the farthest end at this point where my console is, <laughs> to this point here will be what? 10 minus X. So that's how I came about using similar tri uh, triangle to get this formula here. Now, to get your A, you just um, cross multiply and divide, and then you get A equals to what? 10 into brackets, 10 minus X. Okay, I believe everybody's going. So, when we now, we now go back to our initial formula, which is what? 20 plus what? Half into brackets, A plus 20 times H plus what? 120. Now, we know our A to be what? 10 into brackets, 10 minus X. Okay, so if we put our A into this and our H is equal to what? Which is the bottom of this place. Our A should now be X minus what? Eight. Because from point B to D, we know it to be eight from our diagram in the question, right? So this extra portion will now be what? X minus what? Eight. So our H therefore now will be what? X minus eight. And our A is what? 10 into brackets, 10 minus X. So we will just put those into the equation there. And then we come about to this. Okay, um, someone is raising a hand. So, um, so please, um, starting from the yeah, my one, starting from the um general formula that I um, have one over two bh, the area of the trapezium. Yeah. Okay. The second one, that second area, half bracket a plus b times h. So how did you get that A times that, that base, that A plus B, please? I don't understand how we got it. Sorry, um, I just want to do what she is talking about. Okay. So that maybe if you guys have the notes, it will be easier for you to just open, maybe follow right. me. Don't worry, I will share the notes with the group. Okay, you share the notes with the group. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. So, did you get my question? 
Um, please say it again. The from the general equation of the trapezium that he wrote, that second okay. one, that half bracket a plus b times h. How did you get that base a plus b? Okay, so the formula for a trapezium is half a plus b times h. Abi. So now I'm looking at this shape. Uh, let me check if everybody can see my screen. Okay, yeah. So I'm looking at this shape and my A is the shorter side. Okay, this shape is looking like it's facing upwards. Okay, your B is the longer length at this point on the right. You know, I shaded the point um, the trapezium in the diagram that I shown on your screen. Now, the longer side is the B, okay? And then the shorter side is the A, while the bottom is your X. Okay, so I'm going to be answering the question one after the other. Um, Faye, you said I should come again. What exactly should I come in again about? Hello? Faye? Okay, um, when she gets back, she would communicate with us. So I'll continue with what um, my wife is talking about. Now I said the A is this point here, is the shorter side vertically, while the B is the longer side vertically. The B is 20 because it is reaching the top of the structure or the shape. So automatically it will be what we have been considering as 20 all along. Now, but A does not reach the top of the shape. Okay, it is reaching the slopey side of the triangle. Therefore, it cannot be 20. So we have to find the value of A separately. Now the bottom, which is what? The height now in this case is what I just by saying, if the total, uh, if X is from point A, Okay, if X is from point, from this point, okay, from that point to this point, which is D, okay, therefore, to get from this shaded, the two ends of the shaded portion will be what X minus eight, because we have just seen from the question that eight meters is from points B to D. Is that understandable? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. So my was question has been answered. So we can move on. So now, if we input our value of A, which we see as 10 into bracket 10 minus X, and our value of H, which is X minus eight, we input it into this, we would get this general formula, which is 140 plus into brackets, five into bracket 10 minus x plus 10, then close one bracket times what? X minus eight in a bracket. Now we... Ten minus eight, which will give us two. So two times ten will be what twenty. Then we're adding it to the one forty, and that will give us one sixty kilonewton. So if we now plug our various values into the what shear force diagram, now we have our value one sixty kilonewton. We also got a value. 
140 kilonewton when we're considering span BC. Okay. We have a value 140 kilonewton when we're considering span BC. And finally, we now have a value 20 kilonewton when we're considering span AB. Or CD rather, when we're considering span CD. And obviously at point D, our value will be zero, which is shown when X equals towards zero. So when we plug in all this value, we'll get a shear force diagram that looks like this. So this is what we'll derive when we calculate our what? shear force diagram. Is that understood? Um, Toby John, is your question answered? Toby, okay. Is that from Toby or no? Okay, Richard has a question. Yeah, um, Randu, if we started from the left, are we still going to get um, something similar? Yes, if we started from left, you'll get something similar. It's just that your shear force diagram would be mirrored. You understand? Because at the point A now, that's when your zero will start. Right. Sorry, all, me, all right. Thank you. Sorry, Richard, you know, your normal beam, the one we are basically used to is you have either inch support at both ends or one support or inch. That one you can start from anywhere you want. But whenever you're having a cantilever, particularly a fist support cantilever, it's always preferable to start from the free end to avoid complications with your equations you are going to generate. Because if you probably have started from the, you know, from the left, you'll be considering the movement at the free support. And that can be so complicated. Since you get the same answer, it's just better to start with one that will give you less headache. I don't know if, if, if that makes sense. So for free support, all may I have in mind is I always start from the right to avoid complications. So Richard, do you understand? Yeah, I understand. Thank you. And you can actually try it. If you find any difficulties, you can feel... You can message me at any time, or you can message I am scholar Taiwo or any other you know <laughs> person in the class. Um, so let's move to the bending moment. Now, for the bending moment, I always like starting from like Taiwo said. I prefer starting from the free end. Okay, so we'll do that for the bending moment. Now, another question we need to know now is this. Normally, or at least for me, I used to take my clockwise as positive before. But when I started studying the man's notes, I realized that he prefers clockwise as negative. And I don't know whether it's something important to him or maybe it's just trivial, but to be on the safe side, let's take our clockwise as what negative and our anti-clockwise as what positive. Okay? Is that understood? Now, so let's start from span CD. Doing the same thing we, we did for the shear force, we'll take a portion of span CD, okay? And then find the moments. Now, the moment at that point will be what? Remember, we got the shear force equation to be what? 5x squared for span CD, okay? So if we are finding the um, moments we would say okay the force times what's the distance so now moving towards the to, towards the left it would be what a clockwise motion therefore it should be negative so that would be what 5x squared times what and the centroid of a triangle is what one third of its base now the base is x which is the distance we are trying to consider and then it will be multiplied by one over three, it will be what's x over three. 
Therefore, the moment at that span, it was mx equals to minus 5x cubed over 3. Okay. Now, for span a, b, okay, I tried to show um, what, because I had already shown what I had gotten for span b, c, but I wanted to explain it through writing. Now, the center of gravity for a rectangle is what at the middle at the center and then for the triangle it is what one third from the base so now if we have a diagram like this where my x is from b prime to d okay and we know that c to d is still the same two meters that we have always seen from the question getting from b prime to c will just be what x minus two is that understandable Okay. So if we keep on our calculation to get the moments now would be what? 20, which is the highest point of the shape times which is the force, you know, 20 is the shear force at that point times the distance. Now the distance will be what? One third of what? Two meters for the triangle. One third of two meters plus the remaining length that we are considering to the point of consideration will be what? One third of the two plus X minus two. Is that understandable? Sorry, can you go over it again, Rando, please? Can I? Can you go over it again? I don't understand why it isn't 20 as the, as the force for your triangle. Okay. Um, sorry, please, can you also go over that span CD again? I didn't get that at all. Okay, so span C. Now, this is span CD. Okay, so span CD now. We have what? 5x squared as the formula we got from the shear force that we did. Okay. Now, the force times distance is what gives us moment. And I said that clockwise, I'm considering clockwise to be negative because that's what is the orientation the man usually uses. So, but you can do it the other way if you feel you are safe with it. I don't know. But let's, I prefer sticking to what the man uses. Okay, so if clockwise is negative and we are taking it towards the left, okay, and our centroid is what? One third of the base. Yeah? So now, your X is the distance of the new triangle, the one that is drawn in continuous line. Okay? That's the bottom length. Now, one third of that length is what will give you what the centroid. So that's what gave me x over three. Now, the force on that is what? Five x squared. Okay? The negative remains there. So when we draw our computation, we saw that mx equals to what? Minus five x cubed over three. So that's for span cd. That's the formula for span cd. So if you now want to say, okay, finding the bending moment at point two or finding the bending moment at point 1.5, you just need to put what, when X equals to 1.5 into this equation and you will get your bending moment at that point. Okay, so can I move on, Faye? Okay, so for- Yes, please, thank you. For DOT now, you asked for the 20. How did I get the 20? Um, is this from the question? Okay, so um, DOT it is from the question. The 20 is the value of the load that is on the structure. Okay. Okay, yeah. Okay, so you can if you can look at the question, you would see that 20 was there. Okay, so that's the 20 that is showing here. 
And the reason why I used 20 directly is because... Please take note. Okay, so uh, moving on. Now, the 20 is the pinnacle, the IS, the um, total force that is on that structure. Now, so the 20 for the triangle now, it is what's the force times the distance. Now, the 20 is the force times what? The centroid is now one third of the base, which is two. So that makes it two over three. Then plus, now this X minus two was derived as the total length from the B prime that we are considering now to D is X. Now, if C to D is now two meters, B prime to C would become what? X minus two. Okay. So now, if we go that way, and of course, since we are taking moment towards the left, it will be in a clockwise motion. Therefore, the negative will show. Like I earlier stated that my clockwise is what I make negative, and my anticlockwise is what I make positive. Okay, so if we're now considering the rectangle, the force still remains 20. The distance under it is x minus 2. Okay? But you know the centroid of a rectangle is at the word center. So therefore, it will be what to get from the center will now be what x minus two over two. So are we clear? So now, when we have derived this formula, we can now say when x equals to eight, and then we would get that. Okay, so I think everybody is okay. So if we move on now, we can now consider span A, B. Now with span A, B, like I said, since A is a fixed support, there will be a moment there, okay? So if there's a moment there, we need to get the moment because it's going to affect what our bending moment diagram. Okay, so if we are finding MA, all we need to do is just what? Take all moments towards A. Now, if MA is in this orientation that is shown on the screen, which is clockwise, it will be negative. So it will be negative MA equals to, okay? Now we are now taking all moments towards the words left, therefore we will now say for the um, triangle it was half 20 times two times what one third of the base, which is two plus the total eight. And for the rectangle, it will be what? Six times 20, which is six is the base length times 20 times what, one, um, half of it will be three plus the remaining distance, which is what, two. And finally, for the last triangle, which is for span AB, it will just be what, half times two times 20. So MA equals what? 800 kilonewton meter. Hello, Andrew. Yes. Can you hear me? Okay, so um, the previous slide, um, the CB, you wrote 2 over 3. How did the 2 over 3 come about? Since um, we are considering from the other side, not from, we are considering from DC. Not A B. I mean, not from A B. Um, two over three comes by saying one third of the base. The base is two meters. Okay, so that's one over three times two. 
okay. contour of which base? Which base? Is it the triangle? Oh. That is the triangle CD. Can you please put the screen back in that span, BC? So it's one third of this base to L of two. So that'll be one over three times two. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so if we are considering So now, the issue now would be getting the bending moment to point A. And there will be a problem because of finding the centroid of, oh, this is a mistake. It should be a trapezium. I don't know what is appearing. Okay, so, okay, I think I can. Can't. Okay, now, if we are to get the centroid of a trapezium, it will be quite difficult. Except if there is someone that uh, can help us with that. Um, so the easiest run. method. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah, how do you get the... Um, you said after that, half times 2 times 20, then you said to third times 2. You didn't explain how you got that to third times 2 again for the to get the MA, which is 800 units per meter. Sorry? I, I, said, I said, how do you get the two third times two? You didn't explain that. Why get your M is equal to 800 kilometers? Oh, okay. uh, two third times two. Yeah. That is um, for DHM's triangle AB. Okay, now, the triangle AB, the base is not facing A. It is away from A. Okay? So it will not just be one third. It will be two third times the base. Okay. You get Yeah, thank you very much, I got that. Okay, so we can move on. Now, so if we are to now find what the bending moment towards point A prime now, the issue would be getting the centroid of a trapezium which is what will now be derived if we should cut a portion of what? A, B, span A, B. You know, when we cut a portion of mm -hmm. that, we get what? A trapezium. But now the difficulty will now be finding the centroid of that point, of that trapezium. So what we can do is, we can now start from A, B. Since bending moments will still be the same at, the, at that point, we can start from A, B considering the moment Ma, which we got as 800 kilo newton meter. Okay, um, Toby, you have a question? Or has it been answered? Uh, hello, Toby. Do you have a question? It's been answered now. You've answered my question already. Oh, okay. I saw the notification, so I thought maybe it was another. Okay, so now we would have to just start from point A to make our life easy. Okay, so if we are starting from point A now, would say, okay, the triangle will not be what? Half. Now we need, to, when we are starting from point A, we need to consider what is the height of, what's the value of the height of the truncated section that we have cut. 
You know, that's the same thing we did for the share force using similar triangle. Okay, using similar triangle. Now, if we use similar triangle like we did earlier, let me take us back to the value that we got there so that it won't be a confusion. I think that, that's what we got for A initially. Now we got it as what? 10 minus, 10 into brackets, what? 10 minus X. So that's what we call for our shape force when we use similar triangle. That point there, that's the value. Okay, so if we, So if we can look at it that way, we would get the value of that point, and then we cannot use it in our bending moment diagram now. Okay. So if we use that now, it should be what? Now, as usual, I said what? Taking moments so that the negative will remain there. Okay. So that would be what? Half of what? X, which is what? The base times 20 over 2X times X over 3 minus what? 800. Now, the 800 is what we found out to be the value of the couple at that point, which is 800. So um, should I, let me probably explain how I got the half X times 20 over 2X times X over 3. Now, the okay, so let me continue with. Sorry, I was distracted by something. Okay, so the 20 over 2x now is what the half is your x, which is your value of the base for span AB, is the bottom value, which is x times what. 20 over 2x, which is the value here. If we use our, our um, automatic value of the points, then times what? One third of the base. When we calculate that minus 800, you will get a value. But when x is equal to zero, all those ones will cancel out and they will become what? Minus 800 kilonewton meter. Okay, so with that value now, we can go ahead and draw our bending moment diagram. Hello. Is anybody listening? Sorry, Rolando. So, yeah. Sorry, the X value that you used, are you taking X from point A to this section? Is that what you are doing? Are you considering a triangle? I don't really understand. This X that is here in this formula now, is it distance from the pin points to like the section? Or I don't understand. No, the X value is we are just considering now, we are considering just point A to B. You know, I said, if we start from the left, because of the central problem that we are going to experience, if you continue from the right, so we just decided to start from the left since the values will still be the same thing. Like I earlier said, the values will still be the same thing. So now, if you do that, it will be what? Half of the base, which is X, times the height, which is 20 over 2X, okay? Times the central point, which is what? One third of the base, that's X over three, minus 800. So MX equals to what? Minus 800 kilonewton meter when x equals to zero. Okay, okay, I understand now, thank you. We are just considering AB, we are not taking everything. Okay. Okay, so we will derive this bending moment diagram when we finish drawing. Okay. So that's 
out for that. You can always try more examples on this shear force and bending moment diagram, what have you. And then any difficulties you have, feel free to ask your classmates. Everybody's here together. Okay, so now. Um, I'll round you yeah. before you go, for that, please. Randall? Yes, I'm listening. Yeah, you said you got 4993.3. Is it when you insert the value of X as 2 or what? That will get a value. Then the other one, 13.33. For the main diagram. What 9.3, uh, 4.93.33. What's derived when we were doing span BC? Oh, okay, 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 okay. Then the last one, 13.33. Was when we we're doing A B. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you very much. You know when we put, you know we got minus five x cube over three. So if we yeah. put x equals to two into that, okay, it's equal to minus five times eight over three. So if three. you calculate, you get your starting point. All right. Thanks. Okay. okay. So. Uh, I decided, so we are moving into um, energy methods proper. You know, initially we were just trying to understand the way the man derives his um, shear force and bending moment diagram. So now we are going into strain energy and complementary energy proper. Hi, Randall. But before we do that, hello? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right, good. Sorry, before you move on to the next stage, you know, probably some people are not really good enough to ask questions. So I'm, I'm going to be sharing an anonymous pool to know the percentage of people that, I, that are following you, you know, so that we can know if there's a need for us to, I don't know if it gets, so I'm going to just launch the pool. It will take like just some seconds to just click. So I've launched the pool now. So just, just let us know so that we know where everybody is because some people know able to ask questions now. Okay. Uh... I'm sorry, Randall, I have a question, right? Yeah, you can all For span BC, just that MX equation, I am lost from, you said minus 20 times 2 over 3 plus X minus 2. Where that's minus 2, is it like the length of the... Okay, don't worry. I think I finished. Oh, okay. Um, that's okay. Okay, I think everyone can see the result. I think we have a pretty good result. So please, I think we just have about five persons that are not, you know, in line with us. So basically, where Andrew is moving on to is a separate topic. What every, everything has been doing since does not is not dependent on what he's going to teach. So I don't know. Just try to follow as you can, and the five persons should DM me by WhatsApp or by Zoom. So we can see how we can cover up after, by the end of this class, particularly on the bending moment. Yeah, thank you so much. I'll go back to you. Okay. Um, thank you for the feedback. Uh, for those that do not understand, if you, um, I would send a maybe a more explanatory notes over to the group later today. So any other further questions, you can always ask. Maybe you can ask me, you can DM me, you can ask Taiwo also. Okay, so moving on to the, um, um, strain energy and complementary energy, which is the energy methods that we are meant to even do today. Now, before I go on, I want us to know of some particular formulas and their derivation, because like I earlier stated, derivation is actually very important for Dr. Joko. So, um, the first one is the P equals to KE. Now that's from Hooke's law. And then the second one is now the strain energy, which is half K square. Now it will be showing us how that U equals to half K square was derived. Okay, so U equals to half K square was derived from this diagram. Now there's this diagram of strain energy and complementary energy. 
in terms of in relation to what force and extension. Now, the area under the line plotted is the strain energy. Well, the area above the line plotted um, plotted is what the complementary energy. Now, we are going to be talking about strain energy now because that's what we are concerned about in this formula. Now, if we bring out that portion that is shaded out, okay, and try to use the trapezium rule to say what du equals to what half a plus b. Now, your a would be what p. Your a would be this short short side, which I will take as p, while the longer side will not be what p plus dp, okay times the length under, which is the base length, which will be what DE. Okay, so if we now use that and we continue to be what half um, into brackets, what P plus P will become 2P and then the DP will still be there, then multiplied times what DE. Okay, I, I, I will give it a second for that to sink in. So if we are using that, it will be what? Looking at this diagram, I'm going to go over it again so that in case I was too fast. Now, I went from this graph. This was the graph that I'm using to explain the derivation of this u equals to half k squared, okay? So if we draw this graph is representative of the relationship between force and extension. Like I said, this is, the, uh, is similar or related to Hooke's law. Now, this is the graph of force times what extension. Now, if we consider the area under the line, which is what is strain energy, and what we are being concerned about currently, would form what a trapezium along that line. Now, if we bring the trapezium out into the shape, that is showing on your screen, or should be showing on your screen. Yeah, would add this shape. Now, inputting what's the area of a trapezium normally is, which is half a into brackets, a plus b times what's h. Now, that would be what du, which is what's strain energy, equals to what's half of what's p, which is a, plus B, B will now become what? P plus DP times what? The height, which is the extension because height is under the um, extension axis. So it's become what? The E. So if we now um, do our computation, it will be what? Half into bracket 2P plus DP, everything times DE. Okay? So eventually, when we do the computation, it will become what? 2P DE over two plus what? DP times DE over two. Now, from our normal um, mathematical uh, relationship or interaction, we know that DP DE over two will keep on reducing up to the point that it becomes infinitesimally small. So we can approximate DP DE over two to zero. Okay, so with that, we have what u equals to du equals to what pde. Now, that's another formula that is important, so that's why I put it into a box because in future um, calculations, you might actually come across it again. Now, continuing with our derivation for u equals to half k square, okay. We will not say, but remember earlier I stated that P equals to KE from Hooke's law. Uh, I wrote that as number one. P equals to KE. So now remembering that P equals to KE, we cannot put it into the formula above, which is what DU equals to PDE. So if we replace P with KE, we would have what the u equals to k e d e. So now integrating both sides, the u will now become what integral of the u 
will equal to what integral of KEDE. So when we integrate, we will now see what U is actually equal to what half K squared. I hope that's understandable. Yeah, continue. Okay. Please, I have so, a question. Sorry, I have a question. I think this is what the guy, this is what the man did in his notes. Sorry, please go back to the previous page. I'm sorry to take your time. It's not like a very serious thing. It's just concerning the whole integration part. Like, do we have like a, this thing where we are integrating from like zero to something or something like that? Do you get oh, uh, we can consider from zero to E. Zero to E, right. So I think this is how yeah. demand it is knows because if you are integrating, it's meant to have a constant. I don't get what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Constant. Okay, that was wanted to ask. So we can just consider where to integrate from. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, so we are integrating from zero to E. Yeah, sorry for the omission in the slide. Okay. So yeah, there was another formula that, yeah, this formula now would be important in future um, also. So that's why I decided to notice also. So K equals what AE over L. Okay, so now I said, how is it derived? Now we have to remember that Force equals to stress times area. Okay, from normal uh, physics, stress equals to force over area. So if you cross multiply, we yeah, yeah. will come about force to stress, yeah. stress times area. Now remembering <laughs> modulus, which is stress over strain. Okay, you can actually find what stress is in relation to your modulus, which is what is on the screen now. But strain equals what extension of our original length. Therefore, stress equals to what young modulus times strain of our original length. And if we say that force equals to what stress times area, and then we now impute that stress equals to what young modulus times extension of our length, we would get that force equals to what young modulus. Mm -hmm. Over extension. Extension of area. Yes, 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 yes. You are getting okay. It. So <laughs> with that, we can now bring in common factors and then compare it with the original formula that we know that P equals to what? KE. KE. Hmm. So if we compare, we will know that K equals to what? E. E, e over, over L. <clears throat> okay. So that's that about that. So you can continue checking on that formulas to see how you derive various things. Okay. So let's go into energy methods proper, proper. Now there are two divisions. There's the first one, which is the Castigliano's theorem, and then there's the Engensing. Now the Castigliano's <laughs> Newton's theorem is based on strain energy, and it is mainly restricted to what linear elastic range. Ah, oh, what's going well, on? Well, that sorry. Okay, um, that of Engelstein is based on what complementary energy, and it specifies that we have a linear load displacement. Sorry, please. Sorry, sorry, please. If you are not asking a question, please can you put off your mic. Okay, uh, so we move on. Now, it is Castigliano's theorem is based on, or is mainly relating towards strain energy, while Engelsen is relating towards complementary energy. So those are the two formulas of the both theorem you can see on the screen. Now, you know the Castigliano is what I had actually derived earlier. I remember saying du equals to what um, P dE. So if we say du over dE equals P, there is nothing wrong in 
our calculation. Okay, so this is the Castigliano's theorem uh, for your perusal and your internalization. Okay, so now let's look at a question. <clears throat> Okay, so this is our question. We are relating to it to like a choice. Can you guys please let me draw this question? Because I might have to be going back and forth consistently. So it will be helpful if you have the diagram. Okay, so the, it seems like the question is with fingers. Okay, so the parameters we have, we have our E equals to what? 230 kilonewton per meter square. So now we are meant to get what? The def deflection at point Y. Okay. Now there are some things we need to note. Now from the Castigliano's theorem, which I had shown earlier, the interpretation of all the Oenbo that the man is trying to say is what? The y equals to what? The u over the wy. Now that is saying that the first partial derivative of the strain energy, which is the partial u, with respect to any particular force, which is the wy, okay, gives the what? Displacement of the point of application of that force. Now in the direction of the line of action of that force. So Sorry, the interpretation of wonder, all that is... Your English, you have to simplify it again. Or simplify the one you just said. It's still, it's still complex. With which one? The, this... Yeah, the explanation divide. you just gave now for this divide, divide you. Okay, I am saying now, this is the theorem. I wrote the theorem again on the screen. Now, the theorem states that the, fascial, uh, the first partial derivative of the strain energy of the structure, with respect to any particular force, gives the displacement of the point of application of this force in the direction of the line. All those ones, they are English. I don't think they will ever ask us to state it in an exam. But the application of that now, is what I am trying to bring out in this formula I put into a box. Now, the first partial derivative of strain energy is what I represented with that partial sign, the U, okay? It said with respect to a particular force at a particular point. So it does say that if a force should act at a particular point in a structure, the partial derivative of the strain energy with respect to that force, okay, the force acting at that point would be equal to the displacements that force would cause at that point along the line of action of the force. Is that understandable? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So now, we need to now solve the question that was given to us, which is what I'll be sharing. On. Like I said, please make sure you have this question so that it's easier for us to understand as we move on. Okay. Now, from earlier stated, um, um, equations, we know that what equals to half k squared and p equals to ke. So now if we are trying to 
derive a formula for u, which would include our e and our k. We can therefore go this way. We know that u equals to what? Half k square, p equals to k e, and p over k equals to e. So if we now put what? The value of e with respect to p over k would have what? u equals to what? Half times what? p square over k. Okay, so now what we need to also remember that, uh, like I uh, stated earlier, you know, there was a formula I derived that I said k equals to what? E A over L. E over L. Hmm. Yeah. So if we now put that, <laughs> k, we derive that what? U equals to P square L over what? 2 A E. Now, if we not therefore put it into Castigliano's theorem, which says that y equals to partial derivative of, of u over what partial derivative of what w y, we would have what this formula that is on your screen. So you see why I said proving is very important because even before this question has even started, we have started relating various things together. Now, using change rule, you know that the U over the WY would also be the same thing as what? The U over the P times what? The P over the WY. Okay? But U, as earlier stated, is what? Summation of what p square l over what a e over two a e rather. Okay, so if we now impute that into this, we would get this formula. Now, integrating that p square l over two a e. We we'll therefore have y equals to what d over uh, over d w y, which would now therefore equals to what this. Now this is the formula we we'll now use to solve the question that was given to us. Okay. Are we okay before we actually dive into the solution? Sorry, Randall. Yeah, continue. This um, formula for for um this thing for you, right? The one that has them, this A E. The E here is, is strain, Abi. What? The E the E in this formula is strain. No, the E in the formula is um Young's modulus. Young's modulus. Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Sorry, Randall, you said we're differentiating. Differentiating with respect to what? We are differentiating with respect to P. Okay. So I think we can continue, right? Sorry, permit me to come in there. I think. So if I get it clearly, you are asking the the you the P nos that Randu is differentiating, right? Yes. All right. So apparently, you know, from the formula, you are supposed to differentiate the U with the respect to W. Now your U is now expressed in terms of P naught. So it now becomes a shame rule. So because of the fact that your U is expressed in terms of P naught, you have to differentiate with P naught first. But then you multiply by the P naught dwy to take it back to your normal du dwy. I don't know if you get that though. Yes, I do. Thank you. All right. Okay, so we we'll derive this formula I put inside the box. So y equals what? D u d y l d u d w y, which will not be a relation to this. So this is now giving us what in relation to what the force, the length, the area, and Young's modulus. Okay, so because in regular questions, 
they most likely will not give you the strain energy. They might just give you the force and the length. So this relationship is something that you will now use to what gets your deflection at that particular point. So now let's move to our question. Since the truss is symmetrical, what that means is if we divide it across, if we divide the truss question that was given to us, let me go back to it. Uh -huh. If we divide it across that point where Y is concerned, it is like a mirror structure. That means what is on the left, if we mirror it, it will be what we get on the what on the right. And they have the same length, they have the same structure. So if they are symmetrical, what that means is, what that means is relation in relation to the force is the action, the force acting on it downwards and the force acting upwards, they have to be equal, right? So that means the one on the right will actually be the same as the one on the left. So if the forces are meant to balance out, we can say that the two reactions will be the same value. That means VA equals to VB, which equals to what? All the downward forces divided by two. So that will give me what? 15 kilonewton, which was drawn here. Okay, so and since there is no horizontal force, the HA and any other horizontal force that is in the structure will equal to what? Zero, okay? Now, to solve this question, we need to look at it using either what joint method or what section method. Okay, so if we are using either joint method or section method, we are going to be picking different joints in the, um, I used joint method to solve my, so you can always use any other method you so desire. The most important thing is you do it accurately, you get the same answer. Okay, so if I start with point zero, now my point zero is from the question, uh, and it's okay. Point zero is the farthest one here, which I indicated with zero here, okay? This is the farthest um, left bottom. So that's where I'm starting from, okay? So the forces that will be acting on that joint zero is what I tried to what indicates here. Now, due to the point that there is a pin um, support there, there will be a vertical force, okay? Which we have derived to be what, 15 kilonewton. And there will be an horizontal force, but the horizontal force we have also derived it that it to be what, zero, okay? And then there will be a downward force. Now, the downward force is meant to counter the upward force at that particular point. So since there is no other intervening force, you can say summation Fx equals to zero, which makes the horizontal force zero. And summation Fy now will be what? 15 equals to what? F09. Okay. Okay. So now for joints, nine, which is the second joint, the last joint upwards on the left is the next one we are considering. Now, if we know that F90, F90, which will be the same value as what? F09. Now, the only difference will be that F09 will be in cooperation, while F90 will be in tension. I understand. Okay. The slide is sent to me. This one is not there. Oh, yeah, I told you I was going to update it. All right, all right. Uh, okay, I will send, send the complete slide today. All right, thank you. Okay, so.
Okay, um, Osamu said I should start from point two. Okay, but in the slide that that was sent, the question was direct. Oh, that was. Yes. The question. Yes. And the question was correct. Question was there. It's from this joint O and joint zero that is not there. Oh, okay. Okay, so just just look at the question. How best we can try to manage the situation at hand. Okay, so now joint zero, like I said, is the joint at what? the last bottom left where you have that in support, okay? So now, if we look at it very well, there are three forces acting there. There is an horizontal force, okay? Which would be zero, considering the fact that we said that the horizontal force at that point is zero. Now there is a downward force, which comes as a result of the member 09, that vertical member, is pushing at the what, at the support. And then the reaction of the support is counterbalancing it to form what, an equilibrium at that point. Okay? So now the downward force is what I represented with F09. And then since we have found the reaction, which we found here, the reactions of the supports to be what, 15 kilonewton. Okay, we found the reactions towards 15 kilonewton. Now, if we say summation Fx equals to zero, therefore F01 will be equals to zero. And what? F09 will be equals to what? 15. If we do summation Fy equals to what? Zero. Okay, so since there is no negative value, it shows that the arrow orientation I used would be what is actually what accurate. So it means it is actually what compression. Okay. So Sam, do you understand what I have explained since? Okay. So thank you. Now for joint nine. Now joint nine, like I said, it is what at the top left corner. Okay, you know we started from joint zero, which was the bottom left corner. Joint nine now is at the what top left corner. Now if we consider the forces at that joint nine. Okay. This is what we would get. Okay, so now what we would need to get now is what the angle theta, because there is a diagonal member which is what F91. Now to get that, we would go back to our question. Theta is this angle, okay? So if we are to get the value of the angle, all we need to do is what? To find using um, Sokatwa or sine constant, find the relationship between the lengths so that we can get what our value theta. Now using what tan, we can say what? Opposite over what adjacent, which is what 2.5 over what three. Okay, so if we punch our, our calculators, we would finally derive that theta is equals to 39.8. Okay, uh, I would... I will stop here 
And the reason is because I would like to send maybe a, a document so that you guys will be able to go along with what I am doing. The updated document will be sent to the group chat this evening. And then any other further questions can always be asked. But for now, this is where I would stop for the tutorial. So is there any other question from what you have done so far? Hello? So in the absence of any question, I will take my leave.